Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video we're going to be implementing the math functions. Now, this isn't something you necessarily have to do right now, but the next thing we're going to be working on is the rendering mechanics, and so much of that is going to depend on these math facilities that it's just going to streamline the whole process if we go ahead and do them all right now. So, first up is the topic of vectors. Now, as I said in my FAQ, I'm going to sort of do side videos for this. So if you want to go more in depth on, hey, this is what vectors is, and this is how we're going to use them in game development, watch the companion video. This video is just going to be focused on implementing them. Although, the one thing I will say about vectors is, if you don't know what they are, they represent some quantity in a direction. And if you want to know more, that's what the companion video is for. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to implement is the length function. So it's going to be public float length. How long is this vector? And that's pretty easy, just use Pythagorean theorem. So it's going to return the square root, so math.square root, cast to a float, if, there we go, of x times x plus y times y just the Pythagorean theorem, pretty straightforward. Next thing is the dot product, which is going to take another vector 2f. I'll just call it r. It really doesn't matter. And really the only reason I'm calling it that is because that's what I called it in the last vector class I implemented, so eh, why not? And this is another thing that's pretty straightforward. It's going to return the x component of this vector times the x component of that vector plus the y component of this vector times the y component of that vector. So these are probably the two most straightforward vector operations, but the next one's not that hard either. The next one I want is a vector 2f called normalize, and this is the only vector operation I'm going to have that actually changes the data in this vector. First off, I'm going to need the length, so that's of course going to equal the length function. And then I'm going to say x divided equals length, and y divided equals length. And that will set the overall vector length to 1. Then I'm just going to return this vector. And that's the normalized function. Those are the three really basic operations. The only other operation I'm going to have that's going to be a little bit trickier, it's going to be a vector 2f called rotate. It's going to take in some float angle. And for now, I'm just going to re return null, because I want to actually implement this method last. So in the meantime, there's only eight more methods I want, and they're pretty straightforward. You'll see the pattern pretty quickly. It's going to be a vector 2f called add, which takes in a vector 2f called r, because that's what I called everything else. And this is just going to add the two vectors. So it's going to return a new vector 2f, taking this x plus r dot get x, comma, this y plus r dot get y. And that's the add function. Now I want one more add function, it's also going to be a vector 2f, and this one's going to take in a float. So it's going to return a new vector 2f, x plus r, comma y plus r. And there. Now I just want all the rest of the math functions, so subtraction, multiplication, and division, just like this. So I'm just going to copy and paste, and I'm going to change the names accordingly. So this one's going to be subtract, sub, mol for multiply, and div for divide. There. Now I just need to actually change it, which is not that hard, so you need to change this to minus, and really that's all the code changing there is, changing pluses to minuses, or to asterisks, well, but you get the idea. Just be very careful not to miss anything, or it will come back and bite you later. So, yeah. 
Now that should be all of the basic math operations. So that brings us to the rotate method, which is really the only method that's going to be a little bit tricky. So the very first thing I want to do though is I want to convert this angle to radians. So I'll just call it float rad equals math dot two radians angle. And then of course cast this to a float because I'm doing all my math in floating point. So now I'm going to have a float for cosine and sine. So it's going to be math, well, cast a float, math dot cosine of angle. Actually, you know, why not? I can do these as doubles. That way I just have a little bit extra precision. So, yeah. And double sine equals math dot sine of angle. And there. And now I'm going to do the famous rotation equation which is based on imaginary numbers. That's okay. If you want to know more about that, watch the companion video, because I'm definitely not going to have enough time to explain this here. So, first off, I'm going to return x times cosine minus y times sine, if I remember correctly. Then x times sine plus y times cosine. That should, and of course I have to cast all of these numbers to floats. But other than that, that should be everything, in theory. That should rotate the vector, assuming I remembered the equation correctly. But yeah. So that completes two-dimensional vectors, but those aren't all the vectors I want. I also want to... oh, whoops. I almost... Did that wrong. I want to take the cosine of the angle and radian, so that. Be careful there, don't make that mistake. But now, I want to start working on three-dimensional vectors. So, first off, let's create a new class for the three-dimensional vectors. So, call it vector 3f. And, of course, is going to have float x, private float y, and a z component. So all three you can have a public constructor taking x, y, and z. Pretty straightforward. You should you shouldn't have trouble understanding how this code is set up. So I'm just going to go ahead and auto generate getters and setters for this. Select all at the end because you know how to generate getters and setters. So there. As for the actual operations. They're actually pretty much the same. There's one new operation, but other than that, all the operations are going to be the same. That doesn't mean they're implemented the same, but they're going to have the same name. Most of them are implemented the same now. So anyways, for length, I'm actually just going to copy this from Vector2 because I'm lazy. And I'm just going to add on z times z. And that completes the length function. And actually, I'm probably going to do a lot of that, so let's just go ahead and copy everything, except rotate. I'm not going to copy rotate, because rotate's going to be very special for this one. So public vector 3f rotate. It's going to return null for now, because that's going to be very special. I'm not going to implement that for a while. So vector 3f normalize z divided equals length, that completes that. Dot product, need to add on z times r dot z. Oh yeah, I need to change that to a vector 3 that takes in. And there, that completes those functions. It's pretty much the same for these three. Rotate's going to be a lot different when we actually get to that though, so don't worry. There. Are... So yeah. However, before I... Eh, what, why not? I can go ahead and implement those as well. So I'm going to go ahead and implement the math functions, which, surprisingly enough, I'm going to copy. I'm just going to copy the addition function, though. I'm going to modify everything from here. So it's going to change this to vector 3, and this is why. I'm going to have to change this for every single one if I do otherwise. And I'm going to return z plus r dot get z. And my vector 3, there you go here, z plus r, and there. 
those are the way the math functions work. Essentially the same, except now they have a Z component. So, now I'm going to copy and paste three times, then do the same thing I did before. Create subtraction, multiplication, and division. And again, don't mess up here, you're going to regret it later. So, be very careful, make sure you change every single one to minus. And remember, there should be six per function. So, multiply, whoops. There, there we go. Eh. And yeah, there's not much to it now, but whoops. I actually did not know that was a shortcut key. Hmm. Apparently, there we go. <laughs> hmm. And that completes the uh, mathematic operations. Be very careful not to mess this up, because trust me, I've done it before. It's not fun. Okay, so it really just leaves one new function, which is unique to the vector 3, at least in all the code I'm doing. It's going to be public float called the cross product, which is going to take a vector 3f r. Unfortunately, another function I don't really have time to explain in this video, but hey, that's what the companion video is for. So I'm going to create an x, y, and z for this. It's going to return r time, or wait, no, what? No. y times r dot get z minus minus z times r dot get y. And it's going to do sort of something similar to this for every single one. So y underscore equals z times r dot get x. If I can type it, there you go. Minus x times r dot get z. And finally, z equals x times r dot get y. Come on. Minus... Wait, something seems wrong here. Okay, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm just a mannequin. <laughs> Probably because I screwed this up the last time I coded, and it wasn't fun. So that's the cross product calculation. If you don't know how cross products work, that's what the compa that's part of what the companion video is for. But yeah, because we're going to turn a new vector three of x, y, and z. There you go. It's giving me an error. Cannot convert. What? Oh right. Cross product returns a vector three. There. Excellent. That completes all of the vector class. Again. If you need to know more, companion video. I'm going to talk all about not only how vectors work, but how they work in terms of the game engine. Why would I use a dot product in the game engine? There's, it's actually one of the most useful functions of them all. So thank you, hope you enjoyed, and see you next time, where we will continue to implement mathematical functions. Oh, and just figured this was worth mentioning really quick. I've started posting the code from these tutorials on GitHub. There's going to be a link to that repository in the video description of every video. So if you ever have an error or you just want to look at a complete list of the code, there you go. Thank you. See you next time.